would like to officially welcome you with a high five. For those who I have had not the chance to meet, my name is Monika Roth and I am head of press and PR at Roth and Schwarz. Today we have something really special that we would like to present to you from our transmitter segment. I am not going to reveal too much. But the power of five is the reason why we are all here. Rode and Schwarz has developed the first transmitter generation that saves a lot of energy. It doesn't need much space, and we'll see it later on more in detail. It has an easy to use display, comes with a great service, and is a really smart investment. In just a few minutes, Cornelius Heinemann, Director of Terrestrial Transmitter Systems, will give you an overview over the broadcasting market as well as introduce the power of five. Later, Axel Menke, Product Manager for Terrestrial Transmitter System, will present you our newest transmitter. And he will explain how the power of five gives a whole new definition to the broadcasting area. But first, I would like to turn over the stage to Jörg Mies, Executive Vice President and Head of the Broadcasting Division. Mr. Nies will provide you with a Rode and Schwarz company overview and we will discuss our growth strategy and the newest developments from Rode and Schwarz in the broadcasting area. So, without any more introductions, Mr. Nies. Monica, thank you very much for the very nice introductions this morning. Good morning, everybody. Hope you are doing well after the last <laughs> night. We, we have not too, too exhausting to you and you had a good sleep. So, like Monica mentioned already, I would like to give you a little introduction about what is Roten Schwarz, what kind of, kind of company, uh, what are we doing, and what is our different business fields, and then especially I'm going to talk about the broadcasting area, the broadcasting division, which I am heading. So if you see Roland Schwarz as a company, like the, the name shows already, Roland Schwarz more than 75 years ago was being founded by two persons, Dr. Rode, Dr. Schwarz, and uh, still today Roland Schwarz is a privately owned company. So we are still completely uh, in the hand uh, being owned by the two families, the family Rode and all the, the family behind and the family Schwarz. And uh, we are located in Munich in Germany, so where is our headquarter and even where our main development center is being located with about two and a, two and a half thousand people and most of them is engineering, so we are a real engineering company. Um, we, are, we are being presented in more than 70 countries worldwide today and our export share is even much higher than 80% and we are 60 of those representations is Roten Schwarz subsidiaries. And why that? We see it very important that we are very close to our customers, to the market, that we in a very early stage understand what is the requirement the market is going to, that we have direct communication channel to our customers, and even, of course, after supplying products, services, that our customers can directly talk to us, have a direct channel, and in case of a research requirement, that we can react directly, that we have a direct link to our customer. That, that's one of the important points to us since we are seeking for business which has a long-term perspective, not for the short shot, but really for the long-term perspective. And uh, I'm very happy today that I'm able to announce here on, on uh, this press conference the first time the results from our last fiscal year. So our fiscal year is from June to July of the next year and the figures what you are seeing here is for us really record, we could do 1.6 billion euro in turnover, which is approximately a 25% up to the year before. Which is a fantastic number to us, and we are very happy that we can announce this, and that we could achieve this. So that the markets trusted in Rod and Schwarz and gave us the opportunity to deliver our services to these markets. I uh, talked already about our worldwide presence, 
And uh, this means, of course, that not only we are being um, in Germany with uh, a lot of stuff, but we are worldwide, worldwide being represented with our stuff. 8,400 people working in the Roland Schwarz development, manufacturing, sales, and of course service, like I mentioned before. So this is a total Roland Schwarz family worldwide. So what is Roland Schwarz? What are, what are we doing? Most people, if they think about Roland Schwarz, they directly get back to, ah, test the measurement, yeah, spectrum analyzers, and oh, there is a mobile communication test sets, and probably you heard a, a few months ago we introduced a complete new product family, the oscilloscopes. So test the measurement, that's what most people think about. Do you have an idea what is being done with our test measurement? A mobile phone with you? Anybody has a mobile phone in this room? I think so, yes. So you, now you can count. Every second mobile worldwide is being either developed and or manufactured with the road and charts equipment. So you see, we have a, a very, very nice uh, standing in this industry. So the mobile phone industry and mobile network operators very much rely on road and charts technology for forwarding new technologies into the consumer market. Another area what we are doing is secure communication. That means any kind of line of, line of sight communication. This could be, of course, in uh, governmental uses, in military uses, army, navy, but as well, well as air traffic control, ATC. I think most of you flew into Amsterdam Airport. I, I, think I heard one or the other one uh, took the car, yes, <laughs> so, but most of you came into Amsterdam Airport and uh, communication, the airport communication on Amsterdam Airport is being done by a Roland Schwarz communication equipment. So the air traffic control uses for data and voice communication Roland Schwarz equipment and this is one of the approximately 200 major airports worldwide which is relying on Roland Schwarz communication equipment for the direct communication ground to air. Another area, radio location and radio monitoring. So we are not only providing electromagnetic waves, communication on wireless, but we have even the possibility to locate and monitor this kind of communication which is on the air. And once again, of course, this is governmental use, regulatory <coughs> bodies which uh, requires this. There is, of course, um, army and navy using uh, this kind of equipment. But there is a very nice other example to, to make it more clear. Think about huge events like Beijing Olympics. During such an event, an additional 10,000 frequencies need to be allocated because a lot of people come in and they have the requirement to have wireless communication during this time. So additional frequencies need to be allocated, coordinated, and of course need to be measured whether everybody who received the frequency <laughs> transmits on the right frequency, uh, uses the right modulation scheme, and stays in the space he should be. And this is being done with Roland Schwarz radio monitoring equipment. Just to give an example. Because wireless today is everywhere. We have seen this uh, starting our presentation here, wireless microphones, and wireless transmission, and suddenly it didn't work. So we missed the Roland Schwarz monitoring equipment here. But now it works, I'm, I'm very happy on that. So this is the areas of business, and last but not least, of course, the broadcasting area. The sweet spot, the division I am heading, and I would like to give you now a little idea about broadcasting. What are we doing in broadcasting? What is our area? What is our strategy in the broadcasting area? I talked already about the result of the last fiscal year, 20, nearly 25% growth in one fiscal year, which is extraordinary, no doubt. But we have generally in Roland Schwarz the strategy of a two-digit growth per year. And in average, the last 10 years, we could even achieve this number. Now you can ask yourself, why? Everybody's talking about growth, isn't it? Good profits, growth, looks good. No, but we, we have a reason behind that. We clearly made this strategy of growth since we are an innovative company. We need to bring innovation into the market. Our customers require to be a step ahead in technology, and this means we need to continuously invest into new products. New investment is only being possible as long as we have a good profit margin, and the, the margin we can only can do as long as we are ahead of the other ones. 
You may not forget Roland Schwarz continuously, every year, is investing about 15% of its turnover into research and development, every year. So we are investing a lot of our turnover into new innovations to be ahead of the competition and to offer to our services real advantages in new products. That, that's one of the main ideas behind. Of course, we, uh, outside of investing into our own products and extending the markets, we're even looking for opportunities. How can we expand our product portfolio in new market segments? And we are not just looking for market segments, we are not just looking for growth, because it's, it's nice to have another company in the basket. We are looking for things which have real synergies to us in technology and which has synergies to our customers in the relation directly to Rodin Schwarz. And just to give you one example on this, I assume you heard about that. In December last year, we acquired the Hanover, Germany-based company DDS. For Rodin Schwarz, it was a step towards a new direction, but it's still in broadcasting. It's a broadcasting-related company. For us, it was new because it goes in direction to studio and uh, studio operational equipment. DDS, around about 23 million euro turnover, about 110 people worldwide. And they are based in the conversion in the broadcasting studios from tape-based operation to file-based <coughs> operation. So they have very nice equipment helping broadcasters, which today still have a lot of content on tapes, and there is still a lot of content on tapes, and still a lot of content being produced on tapes, because there is legacy equipment out there. And the conversion which is going on, which for us today is normal, everything is, is file-based, the com complete environment in PC infrastructure in our companies is file-based. But this is not yet a total reality for the broadcasters. And for this conversion, DDS offers very nice solutions, and uh, so we have seen between the technology, what we have already in Rodin Schwarz, the markets we are serving, and the technology, what DVS is able to provide, this synergy makes sense to us. Additionally, I need to admit, when we talked to DVS during the uh, acquisition phase, I found, I, I call it little Rodin Schwarz. Fifty years ago, probably, Rodin Schwarz looked like that. Very enthusiastic people, very, with, with a lot of passion into the market and the technology. And this, really gave us the idea of, let's acquire this company, and together, of course, it's the same people, we didn't change the management, we don't uh, change the, the staff, we would like to move more uh, into the market, in the broadcasting studio area. Let me get to a second point, which broadcasting division is serving, consumer electronics. Sometimes in the broadcasting industry, it is forgotten, we need to have a receiver, we need to have somebody who can have all this content on his screen. So the consumer electronics industry, and, and now you name it, it's uh, the Sony's, the uh, Panasonic's, Samsung's, Pace of this world. Those companies which provide <coughs> the consumer market with television sets, set of boxes, to be able to receive the TV signal. Those companies have the main requirement of time to market, and the ability to have to, uh, to bring products to market which can serve more than one standard. If you look from the network operator side, they have just their standard in their country, and that's it. The consumer electronics market, they need to be able to provide set of boxes which can do whatever standard is being required. And once again, time to market is very, very important to them. So we provide the, this industry with a complete range of products which enables them in a very early stage to go into new technologies like DVD-T2, ISDVT, even on the ATSC. We have been very early with our test and measurement, and it gives them a complete range of products they require from very comprehensive measurement facilities like an SFU, which is a flagship, which gives every possibility to develop and research such a, a device up to smaller devices, which is being required later on in a workbench, in a manufacturing, or where just a little bit of software is being written for such a consumer device. So we have a complete range of products here, 
And I, I talked already about this multi standard capabilities, and our test equipment is not being fixed to one standard. It gives a complete range. Whatever standard worldwide is being required is in this equipment or can later be optionally added to existing equipment at the customer's desk. One example we are showing here on the exhibition first time from this SFX family, SFU, SFE, this new SFC, a very small, let's call it low budget instrument, which completes the, the, the complete set of test and measurement being required at such a development facility. I talked about the SFU, very comprehensive, flagship, but maybe you have a workbench where people have a ready-made product and they just want to do some changes on software, on user interface, but of course they need a signal. So we provide the complete range and the SFC is one example for that. So we'll see it on the exhibition. Please come to our booth, have a look at this unit, which is a new family of the SFX family. A new, new baby within the SFX family. And it is, in our um, opinion, the best um, price performance ratio you can today find for modulators, test modulators on the market. Network operators, this is the third market area which we are addressing. So the network operators have a requirement of to be in time, on air, with a good coverage, with a reliable signal. And of course, they are very, very much cost driven. So on one side, they would like to have reliability for their network to be on air, to continuously 24 seven transmit their signal. On the other side, the pressure on the network operators is huge to cost, uh, to cost saving, to drive down their operational cost. And that's something we have in mind with all the equipment we are manufacturing, we are developing to help our customers to go in that direction, to drive down the operational cost in their network. And so what we are offering for these network operators is a complete line of products, transmitters, later on we come to the highlight of the day, but as well, test and measurement being required to set up those networks, so if a new rollout of uh, broadcast transmitters is being done, you require to install this, you need to measure and to bring all this equipment on air. So we have the right equipment for that, for example, ETL. And during operation, of course, you would like to monitor if the operation is fine or if you see there is a degradation in signal anywhere and you can do preventive maintenance, not to let it come to a shortcut or a, a switch off of signal transmitters. So we are providing a complete range of products here, transmitters, test and measurement for installation, service and maintenance, and the complete monitoring range. And like I mentioned already, our main focus is to provide products which are most cost efficient to our customers. This is the main focus. So what we are having is equipment which increases customer benefit or drives down, like I mentioned already before, the so operational costs, the OPEX, for our customers. Of course, we are still trying to extend our regional presence. That's, that's the second point on the market, what we are doing. But this goes along, we know this, with the innovation of our products. Let me give you an example for test and measurement for network operators. Here on the exhibition, we are first time showing a new, new instrument. And even this one completes our line of products which we have for the network operators. So we have a very comprehensive flagship module, which is the ETL, and which is used anywhere, everywhere over the world for measuring and maintaining networks. But of course we know there is requirements for smaller, lightweight, battery-operated equipment. And this is the EFL 240 or 340. This is two different models with some different options in it, which is a, a pure service uh, equipment. You need to uh, keep in mind such a television station can be on a mountain, very difficult to reach, very far out, and of course the less equipment and the more lightweight uh, wave the equipment is that a service technician needs to carry around, the better it is 
And that's the reason why we introduced this uh, measurement equipment, this uh, EFL uh, 340, 240, pure for the service technician which is traveling around and does preventive maintenance of first sight um, uh, finding of faults on the station. Even this one will be shown on the exhibition on our booth and we would like really to see you on the booth and explain you a little bit more about this instrument. So if I see it right, uh, I'm getting to a point to hand over to Cornelius, Cornelius Heinemann, the director of the broadcasting transmitters department, and he will give you a little bit more insight in our transmitter activity. Thank you. Thank you, Jürgen. And good morning again. Uh, my presentation handles two topics, and in the first part, I would like to give you a short overview onto the situation in the terrestrial transmitter market. Six years ago, we launched the 8000 transmitter generation. The 8000 transmitter generation, meanwhile, offers a complete portfolio from small to very large transmitter systems, from low to high power. It offers different cooling options, air-cooled, liquid-cooled. We find all major standards in this family, and we see an implementation of many redundancy schemes to ensure the availability of the transmitter installations for our customers. Finally, with this family we already achieved some years ago to be the number one in the TV transmitter market. And in my next slide, I'd like to illustrate this position. This, this slide shows our estimate of the market share in order income over the last 12 months. The TV transmitter market is a very competitive market. There are many, many players. We have the big four, everyone knows, which are present in every region. And then we have many, many small companies offering either a certain product segment, like low power, or which are present in only one region. And I simply can say it is a big success for us that we achieved in the last fiscal year, over the last 12 months, this impressive number of a market share of 28%. Nevertheless, if you are the number one in the market, it is always a challenge to keep this position because the market is changing. In my slide, you find on the left side um, our order income as a relative uh, diagram uh, what is the share for every region. And on the right side it's the updated figure for the last fiscal year. What can we learn out of this comparison? We see a very stable business share in Africa. We see a strengthened business in Asia Pacific, which recovered from the financial crisis. But mainly, it shows for us two big successes. If you look to the left, try to find the slice for Central and South America, which is very, very small. And then on the right, you see that it grew to a considerable slice of the cake. And this shows to me that our strategy for this region is working, which is mainly two parts. One is that we implemented the regional standards and we strengthened our local presence in service and sales. And the other message is, and for me that was a little, little bit surprising, that Europe got a bigger share in our order income. Surprising because we thought, okay, at least West, Western and Central Europe is mostly digital already, 
So what, what would drive the business in Europe to get an even higher share? Yeah, and the answer was quite e easy. There was a big wave with PVBT2. And we were very happy that we could get a great share of this business. Now, with the next transparency, <coughs> talking about standards, I, want, I would like to discuss some trends we see in the market. Talking about DVBT, DVBT is an important part of the business, of course, because we see many networks which are already existing, but which need to be expanded either due to new multiplexes which, come, uh, which become available or because customers want to exchange their coverage by investing in low power equipment. And we see this, for example, in countries like Portugal, France, Czech Republic, Great Britain, but also in other countries. Talking about DVB2, DVB2, we see two main motivations to install T2 networks. On the one hand, in countries where we already have DVB-T networks, the motivation is to introduce HDTV services with T2 because this is simply the most effective bandwidth, effective way to do so. And we see this and we're able to participate in these networks in Sweden, Finland and Great Britain and we see as well trials in many other countries. <coughs> and then, of course, we see this step from analog TV directly to T2. In all countries where there is no DVB-T installation yet, for example, in Russia, Serbia, Ukraine, Turkmenistan, so you see there is a concentration on Eastern Europe, Funny enough, wo der Schwarz counts Turkmenistan to Eastern Europe. It's our sales structure. And also in other regions, T2 is an important standard. Exa examples are India or the SADC countries in Africa. SADC is the South African uh, development community. Countries like South Africa, Angola, Namibia, Zambia, Tanzania and so on. And those countries in Africa decided roughly 12 months ago for the implementation of T2. And then the third one in the game is ISDB TV. As you all may know, most of the Southern American countries decided to go for ISDB TV. And yeah, we, we simply decided some years ago, yes, that's that's the focus region for Rode and Schwarz because we expect a lot of growth due to the upcoming events. We have the Football World Cup and the Olympic Games and we think, simply think that this is motivation enough for those countries to go digi digital. And, um, and the first steps we are doing right now just confirm this decision to go this way. Yeah, and now I'd like to turn over to the second part of my presentation. And yes, as number one in the market, of course we continuously develop new products and introduce them in the market. Nevertheless, for me it's really a special moment now. Um, we introduce it tomorrow and you get the news today, 24 hours in advance. And it's a pleasure to me to present to you, and I'm very proud of my team that we made it for this show, to pre present to you the new transmitter generation from Boden Schwarz, <coughs> which is on air from tomorrow. With the 
new transmitter generation, we redefine efficiency. Efficiency to the power of five means true efficiency in energy, in space, in operation, in service, and in investment. Let's talk about those points. What does it mean? Efficiency in energy. Already the NV8600 is the state of the art product regarding efficiency. And now, with the new transmitter generation, imagine if you could save more than 20% on your energy bill at home. Regarding space, we spend considerable effort in doing a lot on power density and to do <coughs> a higher degree of integration in the system and later on I will show you a very impressive example what does it mean efficiency in space. Regarding operation we have two aspects. On the one hand it's of course a brilliant performance which is the head topic for this transmitter generation and on the other hand we implemented a very nice and new graphical user interface to make it easy to install and easy to operate either locally or from remote and regarding service it's clear it is an important feature of the transmitter generation that service tasks need to be performed easily, service or maintenance tasks, so there is a graphical user interface which makes it easy to lo localize things which needed to be, be maintained and the system design allows it to exchange them if needed easily. On the other hand, this transmitter generation offers you more something like a tool set. It's system flexibility and a bunch of options for me yeah the most working comparison is compare it if you would purchase a car yeah finally you have so many options how to set up your car that finally it is exactly the car which fits your needs and the same we achieve with this transmitter system design that our customers can configure transmitters fitting to their needs. And this finally ends also in an efficient investment. A safe investment, future-proof investment, things like an easy changeover from analog to digital TV, or from T to T2, or other system enhancements. So finally, True efficiency in energy, in space, in operation, in service, and in investment leads to a best-in-class cost of ownership. I promised you an example, an example for more efficiency in space. More efficiency in space at the example of a 2 plus 1 redundancy system. What is a 2 plus 1 redundancy system? A very transmitter specific thing of course. It means we have two operational transmitters and one who is the redundancy. If we see a 5 kilowatt installation means we have for each transmitter, each single transmitter one rack. So for a 2 plus 1, this means 3 racks. Now imagine you could cut space by 
the THU9 can. It offers a 2 plus 1 redundancy system in a 3 in 1 rack solution. Now, I'm, I'm sure you are hungry to hear more about the new THU9 transmitter generation. And this is a point where I like to hand over to Axel Menke, who is the product manager for this new transmitter generation. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Cornelius. Um, before I step into the details and main benefits of this new transmitter family, the THU9, um, I would like to give you an impression and an idea um, how the system is built up. So you can see here the transmitter rack and we have up to 12 amplifiers in uh, one rack. So a lot of power inside. Um, above this amplifier block we have the transmitter and operation unit. I will explain uh, later in detail. And in the top block um, we have the exciters and the control unit um, vertically mounted um, on the top. And in the back of the rack show you much better here. We have installed um, the power distribution, the mains distribution and the several transmitter components in the RF part. So that means in this case you can see a configuration of multi transmitters, so multi takes, that's what we call this feature and um, this gives you even four transmitters in one rack. So you can see these four blocks, that means each transmitter has three amplifiers, its own power distribution, its own power combiner and its own RF part going out. So that means up to 75% of saving in space. A second configuration I would like to explain from the build up so, we've tried to have an open rack installation here to make it much more obvious. So, this is our new all-in-one configuration. So, what does all-in-one mean? Um, besides the amplifiers and the, let's say, standard transmitter part, we have used our high power density of the system to integrate even the bandpass filter and the pump unit. So, that also for operators with just one transmitter saves again a lot of space. So but now let's come to the main benefits. Cornelius talked about um, the efficiency that we are redefining with that concept about the five aspects uh, we are facing at and now I would like to explain what that means in detail in our transmitter family. So first of all there is the brilliant efficiency of the system. So with this transmitter family, we are reaching up to 28% of energy efficiency for COFDM standards and even 30% for ATSC. And that is including the cooling system, so really in total. To reach that outstanding efficiency, which is today the highest on the market available, um, we have integrated several features. I would like to explain what is the technical details behind it. Of course, the amplifier again is the core component of the system. And we have done a lot of measures to improve the amplifier itself, to reduce the RF losses, to increase the energy efficiency. And that is, for example, the combining stages inside the amplifier. And of course, we are using a very modern and very efficient um, Aldemos power transistor based on 50 volts technology to reach this efficiency. And the third point is that we are using specially developed power supplies, three in each amplifier, that also add benefit in energy efficiency in the amplifier itself. Now the second point for the brilliant efficiency of the system is the unique system design itself. So it's not only the amplifier, but the whole system is optimized to an outstanding energy efficiency. And what you can see on this, um, this picture here is the back of the transmitter rack. Um, you can see it later on if you want. 
um, directly, so you can have a hands-on. So the back here is showing the harmonics filter. Um, that has been also improved with a reduced RF loss and power combiner um, that also has innovative technology inside to reduce the RF losses in the system. That gives a big benefit. So, as I said, um, it's not only the transmitter itself that um, adds benefit to the efficiency. Um, one component that is often really forgotten in that calculation is the cooling system. And uh, we see the cooling system also as a central point of innovation and of improvements. So, just a few examples what we've done. For example, our pump unit that is uh, built up with two pump modules in active reserve. The pump speed of these modules is always set to the system configuration. So if you just have four amplifiers inside, you need um, less liquid flow and therefore we set it down to also uh, save energy. Uh, another point is the heat exchanger you can see here. So this uh, component that is placed outside to bring away the heat to um, the air. Um, this one is using specially modern um, fans based on electronically commutation technology. That's, uh, that's an invention made by uh, Pops, the a world leader in fan technology. And um, this means that you have a significant um, reduction of energy costs and uh, energy consumptions by using these fans. And these fans are speed controlled. That again means during the day when it's hot, they are running a bit faster. During the night when it's cold, they can reduce the speed. And that again reduces the energy consumption of the system. And that means in total, to sum it up, if you have a brilliant efficiency in the system, you will need uh, less energy for the transmitter network and that saves you a lot of money during the whole lifetime um, by saving the energy. So, a second uh, very important benefit is the scalability and the flexibility of the system concept of the THU9 transmitter family. So, if you have a look at the last years for the transmitter network operators that um, was a lot of change in, in um, the business. So there was the analog to digital conversion, for example, or there have been implemented several new standards like DBBT2. And that means the network operators have to adopt their network to the needs uh, that came up. And of course, network operators have the need to be um, future proof, to have a safe investment. And we have several features in our system that uh, lead in that direction. First of all, again, this is the multi-TX concept. Multiple transmitters in one rack. So this feature gives you the ability to be open for the future, to have an um, easy expansion later on if you like to. And so this really makes it a safe investment. So that is again the back of the transmitter with the um, RF outputs, so very compact integration. This multi-TX concept um, leads us to the TCE 900. So what does TCE 900 mean? That stands for Transmitter Control Exciter. So this is a common platform for um, the control unit and for the exciter or the modulator part in it um, in the transmitter. So here it is covered, um, but here you can see a bit more on the picture. So we vertically mounted devices inside the rack with all the connections to the roof that makes it easy um, to exchange and easy to install and up to seven TCE 900 find their place in the transmitter rack. And as I said, this is a common platform so we are using just one base unit for control unit and exciter and the customer can, however he likes, change the configuration. So as he has a base unit, he just takes out one board from, from the one device and puts it into another device. That gives really the flexibility on site, less spare part requirements, and um, yeah, a very modular uh, approach. 
So when we um, step into the TCE 900 configuration as an exciter, there are as well several features that stand for this flexibility. And, um, this, first of all, is um, the software concept for the transmission standards. So it is easily possible to switch from one transmission standard to another. So as this is just software based. And even if you um, like to be prepared and say, um, today I'm doing DVB-T, but perhaps tomorrow T2, um, you can prepare this and it makes it easy to switch afterwards um, with the transmitter family. Um, the second point is the easy analog to digital conversion. And um, yeah, this is quite easily possible by just pressing a button or even time controlled if you like doing that at night, for example. So, another important issue that is worth mentioning, uh, mentioning it here separately is the IP transport stream input. Um, as it is our experience, the IP protocol is getting more and more important and that's also the case for the broadcast network operators and so we are offering now in our exciters additionally to the standard ASI inputs two redundant gigabit Ethernet inputs for the feed of the transport stream signal. So again, that's a really future-proof solution if you are just now having an ASI network, no matter what comes, if you later have an IP distribution network, it's open to migrate to this. So that means, in total, with that transmitter concept, the customer, whatever he needs, um, he is open for the future and he has a real toolbox to create the configuration he needs for his network. So, the third main benefit is the compact design of the transmitter family with a lot of different facets and aspects. Um, first of all, the most important point, of course, is the exceptionally high density of power inside our transmitter family. Um, that means that one of these amplifiers offers an output power for, of uh, 1.35 um, kilowatt for CoFDM standards and that in total gives us a power density of up to 15 kilowatt for CoFDM standards um, up to 18.5 kilowatts for ATSC and even 30 kilowatt for analog television. So this I think is the, the highest output power density that is available on the market for solid state transmitters today. As this, of course, is a key fact that brings us to the new two concepts I explained at the beginning, and that is, first of all, the multiple transmitter concept, multi-TX. So, as we have this high power density, it is possible to have up to four transmitters in one rack, uh, and that then saves up to 75% um, of the floor space. So, um, the second thing that is connected to this saving in space is the all-in-one system as with an integration of the bandpass filter and the pump unit you um, really can save space as well with a single transmitter band. And last but not least, the liquid cooling system itself is very compact as well. We have the integrated pump solution, of course, but we have also uh, external ones, and this external pump unit and the heat exchanger are a very compact design. That, of course, um, is connected to the high power efficiency of the transmitter. As we um, do not need to bring out so much heat uh, to, to convert it to the air, uh, we need less space for the heat exchangers, and of course, that gives us uh, in advance in the compactness of the whole system. So, the fourth main benefit is the simple operation concept 
of, of the transmitter family. So if you imagine the network operators now have a lot of equipment, the um, networks are getting bigger and bigger, a lot of equipment to maintain, to operate, and therefore, of course, it is important to be very fast um, with the operation of that equipment. And therefore, we have designed a new unit that is called TDU 900, which is the operating unit um, of our transmitter. And I can show you directly on the transmitter what that means and what the benefit is. So it's located just above the amplifier block here. You just give a push on the display and it comes out. You can turn it around and just fit it to your needs. So if you're a bit taller, turn it like this. And then you have um, the touchscreen display that is easily um, to operate. So even for my not too small fingers, it's easily possible to press the buttons and to get to the certain um, parameters in um, the graphical user interface. So, um, I would like to show you later on a few things on this operational concept to make you um, better understand what's, what's behind. Um, just a few words in advance. There are two views we have inside. So, um, the like, standard one is the device-oriented view. That means you can see the different building blocks of the system and have an impression um, yeah, how the architecture is. So it's like a block diagram of the transmitter family. Um, the second one, and that's really new, is the task-based view that we um, introduce with that new transmitter generation. Task-based view, that means that we have defined different tasks that the service personnel on site has to do. And that again helps the people on site to get their jo uh, job done very quickly. So they go to the transmitter scene, I have to do calibration of power, I go to that point and just step through and that's it. So very easy. But first of all I would like to, to sum up the four main benefits. So first it's the bullet deficiency that um, reduces the energy costs. Secondly, it's the scalable and flexible system concept that makes it future-proof and uh, makes it open for future um, needs. And that again saves cost on the um, old perspective. Thirdly, there is the compact design that saves infrastructure costs um, for the network operator. And last but not least, the simple and fast operation helps to um, need less time for the operation of the transmitter network. So but now let's go into the graphical user interface and I would like to give you an impression how easy this works. First of all, perhaps a few <coughs> words about what you see here. So this is the system overview at the top level of, of the hierarchy. <coughs> Um, at the left hand side you can see always um, the fixed buttons that you will always uh, see that are most important um, and on the right side you have a system overview over the whole transmitter system. Now what does this screen show here? We have three transmitter systems included in one rack and that's exactly what you can see here. So that means three times five kilowatt in just one rack and um, yeah, that's the way that we present it. Um, we are using a lot of colors, perhaps I step just in, in one of these transmitters to better explain it. Um, as, you, as you can see on first sight, it looks very green and that as an operator would make feel you very comfortable as everything is running. So. You've seen at first the green indication of the output power and the reflected power, so that means the power level is okay, and also no reflection at the antenna, so that means the antenna system is okay as well. You have exciter A and B, so that's a dual drive system with two exciters for redundancy, 
and both excitors are working very fine. The inputs are correct, green as well. The outputs are correct. The switching stage is working properly and also the output uh, stage with the amplifiers and the cooling has no problem. So very easy, nothing to do. That gives me an additional time to show you a bit more. And um, let's go, for example, into um, the output stage. There I have the possibility um, to go into the cooling, into the amplifiers and into the rec operation. I would and now take the example of the cooling system here um, and this just gives an overview over the cooling system for your transmission. So you can see that this is a closed circuit. There is the pump unit here with the two pump modules. It is delivering the cold, so indicated in blue, the cold li liquid to the transmitter. Then the liquid goes through the four amplifiers and then it's brought out to the heat exchanger. And now it's heating up, so that is indicated in red here. In the heat exchanger, we have two fans installed, and again we see everything's green, everything's working fine. So the colors you don't see, and hopefully will not see uh, as an operator, are yellow for a warning, and red would be for a fault. So like a traffic light indication. Another thing you can see here at the bottom, what is very helpful is um, the hierarchical steps in the system are displayed in, in this bar here. So that means um, I'm in the cooling view now and I would like to go back to my transmitter overview. It's just one click ahead, that means I just press the button transmitter and I'm back again. So very easy, very intuitive and as the buttons are big enough, um, that's very easy as well. By the way, the whole graphical user interface that you can see here um, on the display unit is just the same in the web interface. So there is no change. It's easy if you are familiar with a display unit here. It's the same at the web browser. Okay, so that's, I think, enough about the device view. Let's come then to the task view. So you can see we have two buttons here. First one is the device view we had here. And now it's possible to go in the task view. So we have just one active um, task here. And this, is, this is a simulation. And I'm, I would like to show you how it works um, at this ex example here. So this is, again, the, the calibration of the pump. So I just step into this power calibration task and I get an overview what is to do. I have a short description what steps are required for that task and um, see my different things, um, the, the measures of the forward power, what the status is for example and these menus are really dedicated to uh, what the task is. So. If I don't know exactly and I need additional information, we've also integrated the help function, and that is not also available for the task view, but also for the device view, and that is based on our um, contents of the manual. If I activate this help function, you see on this identify button, there a question mark occurs suddenly. And this indicates underneath this button, we have a help function. And when I press that button then, I get the dedicated help for that. So that tells me how to find um, my measuring coupler and uh, how to understand what's going on there. So I think this is a very intuitive concept um, for the service people on site that helps for um, installation, for commissioning, for the operation itself, for maintenance and for service. Okay, so that was the presentation of the GUI, and thank you from my side. Thank you, Axel. Thank you, gentlemen, for explaining what the newly defined Give Me Thrive from Rode and Schwarz is all about. Now it's your turn. Please feel
feel free to ask as many questions as you like. Microphones are available. Don't be shy. <laughs> Who would like to be the first one? Um, talk about some TV technology. Um, I noticed in the presentation, the earlier presentation, you were talking about the markets. Um, how would you explain the shrinkage in uh, the North American market for transmitters? What, what would you have the reasoning behind that? For us, for Buda and Schwarz, it's mm, mainly two reasons. The one is you may have heard that we, we were very successful with the mobile TV installation of Flow TV. <coughs> And as officially announced, uh, Flow TV stopped operation. So for us, this means a big difference, of course. And uh, currently, also, we, we discussed yesterday that you are as well involved in the mobile DTV uh, topics. And uh, yeah, it doesn't take off like we would <coughs> wish it would take off. So that's the reason why we see this market is currently quite weak. So you're saying the mobile DTV market in the U.S. has not taken off like you expected? Yeah. yeah. And maybe if I can add this, the, the, uh, the broadcasting transmitter market in the U.S. is very weak. It's a decreasing market the last years. And the hope was, like Cornelius mentioned already, that there could be an increase again on the mobile DTV, which uh, is still a hope. But it's only it's still a hope, so it's not really taking up. And therefore, the market is shrinking, so therefore, even inside of the media flow, what Cornelius mentioned, our market share is decreasing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mark Hellinger, TV Technology Europe and TV Technology Asia. What about mobile in Europe, Asia, or Latin? It's a possibility. And also, has anyone, any broadcaster, discussed 3D with you over terrestrial and anything beyond very general terms? Mm -hmm. uh, on one side, mobile, the, everybody's still talking about mobile TV. And um, I need to admit, as a reality today, mobile TV did not take off. As far as I know, we have only two installations worldwide, with, which is in Japan and Korea, where mobile TV today is on air, you can receive it. Uh, since it's free-to-air signals, there is a certain number of subscribers or a certain number of people looking to it. But it's, it's I, I personally believe, yes, there is a demand for mobile TV, but the business case was not, was not yet being made that this can really roll out. Um, get me the second one again. Anybody talking about 3D yeah. beyond just general? Uh, yeah, we have one network which we just recently in, uh, implemented in um, Italy. And this network is uh, planning to offer a 3D service, as far as I know. I need to admit, we, we are not really involved in, into this area since uh, the transmitter, the pure transmission path, is totally transparent, whether it's SD, HD, 3D, or whatever kind of content. And therefore, we are not directly involved. But, but the question is absolutely right. There is not a lot of talks now which gets to us about 3D. And even we are very curious, will this take off its broadcasting area? But it's a question mark. Yesterday with some of the colleagues we discussed it and we came to no conclusion. Germany is a different market uh, in regard of DVB-T and DVB-T2. Uh, the discussion that we are currently having in Germany is when uh, the DVB-T users will receive HD television over terrestrial transmitters. So um, can you tell us something about the negotiation that's currently going on between you and the PBS? and when we will have the opportunity to receive HD TV terrestrial. So, Mr. Wagner, uh, I have the same question as a consumer. I would like at home to get HD TV while terrestrial as well, uh, because sometimes I feel a little bit bad that I additionally have satellite reception where we do terrestrial. Uh, but I can't talk about these negotiations. But let me 
put, put it in the way what is, what is public, everybody is interested, but it looks like the regulatory environment is very difficult, which is in Germany, you know, ARD, alle liegen durcheinander. Uh, it's a little bit difficult, so the environment we do have, and therefore we know there is talks, and what gets to us is there is a, an interest, there is first trials being implemented in the, in the north with NDR, as far as I know, Berlischer Rundin is planning things. We know that Media blog, Broadcast is, is looking into that, uh, so there is some interest, absolutely, but I, we cannot talk about things uh, we are doing in detail, and uh, I need to admit we don't have real details and information when it will start. But, but the interest is the same on my side, like everybody would like to see in HD. Um, I have to add something to what you told currently, because I do have an internal paper that tells uh, that um, the uh, PBS in Germany is going to transmit HD television on the 1st of May, starting on the 1st of May next year. That means actually to me as a consumer, as well as as a journalist, that there has to be some transmitter sites transmitting at least HD TV over DVB-T2. So, uh, I mean, you are involved in it and there must be an answer. And maybe the answer is that of course we are in contact with public broadcasters in Germany and they currently class classify equipment from different manufacturers. Mm -hmm. But I cannot state here that we already got tender material um, what I need to ask you is, uh, what are your plans for DVB-T2 expansion in the Middle East? I notice again with the market share that uh, it's gone down over the past year. Your market share has gone down. It is not the market share I displayed, it's the share of Middle East in our business. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So, um, but the feeling is uh, as currently Middle East is a little bit difficult regarding business at the moment that uh, we currently don't have the questions to install HDTV services. But nevertheless, we of course are ready to, to answer appropriate questions okay, uh, of customers. Yeah, could you explain to me why it's a little difficult? You called it a difficult region. You said it's difficult. Yeah, it's, it's a political situation. Okay. So we can really find the political situation in some countries nearly makes it impossible to do business. Uh, not for us, uh, as well as for the network operators, they are busy with other things. And we just see a decrease in projects in the region. Okay, all right. I'm Wen Gong Wang from uh, Broadcast and Production China. Uh, for Asia Pacific, uh, your share is growing. So, what are the main reasons behind the growth? And also, what's your market position in China? Thank you. Um, okay, there were two questions. Yes. Uh, the one is um, what the answer for the first question is from my perspective. The, the driver for the increase of the business share of Asia Pacific is simply that the business recovered from a crisis situation. There were many shifted projects which come, come up now again, which were, we were able to, uh, yeah, to supply with material. Uh, regarding China, we have a very good position high power transmitters for very popular and very important sites. For low and medium power transmitters there are also a lot of local manufacturers, suppliers and of course there is competition ongoing. We offer of course our medium power series which is locally assembled for example in, in China and here and there we have successes there, um, so it contributes to our market share in the region. Did it answer your question? Uh, 
Any more questions? Andrea Rivetta from Rodgers and Production Italy. A simple, very simple question. One idea about the cost of this different configuration of this new jewel? Well, I think the good message is we uh, will not uh, increase the prices, so the customer will gain uh, for the same money uh, a lot of more functionality um, inside the transmitter rack. Um, to talk in detail about prices, it's very difficult because the, yeah, there are so many, yeah, so many different configurations, and uh, yeah, therefore it's quite difficult. The benchmark is the actual the, the <laughs> yeah. price of the exactly. offering the 8,000 uh, 600 series. Okay. Anything else you would like to know? So, if there are no more questions, I would like to invite you for a lunch buffet. Please feel free also to use this time to familiarize yourself with the new transmitter and chat with our specialists. So I only have to say thank you very much for joining us yesterday and today. And it was a really great pleasure to us. Thank you.